It has been called the world's greatest piggyback ride, a space shuttle atop a Boeing 747 jet aircraft. But this is no ordinary 747. This is the shuttle carrier aircraft, the SCA. This specially modified jumbo jet was not only a taxi service for the shuttle, but also helped in the development of the shuttle itself. In 30 years of flying, the majestic image of a spacecraft joined to the SCA became a symbol of American invention and ingenuity. You searched the sky. You heard the roar of the engines getting closer. Then someone would shout, there it is, the SCA. In the 30-year history of the space shuttle, if you were one of millions of people who saw the SCA fly over your town, you understood the excitement it could generate. So it was always a pleasure to have the locals come out and have the you know, the kids be able to look up and see a shuttle sitting on top of an airplane. That, that's certainly a, a huge memory of mine. When I was um, a teenager, when I lived in Huntsville, Alabama, where I was raised, and um, at the time I was at Von Braun Civic Center in Huntsville and looking up and seeing this, this airplane, you know, and, and who would have thought that <laughs> I would have ever flown this airplane? I mean, it, it, how ironic that I would end up being a guy who flew the airplane and being lucky enough to be the, the last guy to fly this vehicle for a, a 30-year uh, sh you know, shuttle program. The unique image of two sleek vehicles attached in a seemingly impossible configuration evokes feelings of progress, elegance, and achievement. To understand how the shuttle carrier aircraft came to be, you must understand the shuttle itself. It was America's first reusable spacecraft. At the end of a space mission, the shuttle would re-enter Earth's atmosphere. Then it would glide down to a runway at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. There, engineers would get to work refitting the spacecraft for another mission. But NASA had other landing sites, such as Edwards Air Force Base in California. If the shuttle landed here, it would need a way back to its launch site in Florida. For flying the skies on Earth, NASA engineers first thought that perhaps the shuttle could have its own jet engines. But these proved to be too heavy, too complex, and too costly to develop. NASA would have to find another way to transport the shuttle. Enter John Kiker, an engineer at the NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. I made a little sketch of this and put it on my desk and and then after several weeks I called up Owen one day and told him not to laugh but I wanted to show him something. Using model airplanes, Kiker and his team proved the concept of transporting the shuttle on the back of a 747 jumbo jet. In addition, the tests showed the shuttle could be air launched off the back of the plane. The idea was accepted and the shuttle carrier aircraft was born. The SCA first flew the shuttle on what was called the approach and landing tests. The shuttle Enterprise was lifted on the back of the SCA to an altitude of about 27,000 feet and air launched. The aerodynamic tests were crucial in proving the shuttle's ability to glide down to a landing and helped engineers refine the shuttle design. Just as significant, the imagery of the SCA and shuttle in action was the public's first glimpse of an amazing new era of spaceflight that was just on the horizon. The shuttle became a renowned and iconic space vehicle. The SCA allowed those of us on the Earth to share that excitement when it served its role as a shuttle taxi. Mission by mission, SCA crews eagerly listened for word if the shuttle would have to land somewhere other than Florida. We start getting excited when we hear that uh, the weather is bad in, in Florida. Those few of us uh, that fly this airplane, um, 
like like bad weather in Florida. <laughs> so <laughs> we get a chance to, to do our job. So um, as soon as we know that the shuttle is, is en route to, to California, that's when we start uh, getting involved with the shuttle ferry team. So basically the shuttles are, are brought into the mate, uh, D-Mate facility and they're, they're hoisted up and the shuttle carrier craft, the 747, is moved under the shuttle and then uh, the, the attachments are made. The shuttle and its cargo can weigh anywhere from 160,000 to 220,000 pounds. To lift and fly with that much weight on its back, the SCA had some special modifications that made it unlike any other jetliner. Most noticeable were vertical fins mounted on the tail. The shuttle caused air turbulence, and the fins brought back stability to the flight. Other than the fins, it might appear this was an ordinary jumbo jet. But as SCA flight engineer Henry Taylor can tell you, there were some very important differences between a regular 747 and a shuttle carrier aircraft. We're here inside the main cabin of the shuttle carrier aircraft. As you can see, there's no insulation, no paneling. All the lavatories and galleys have been removed to save weight. Above me is one of the two bulkheads, this one and this one, that are used to provide support for the orbiter attach points. The attach points for the shuttle carrier aircraft are in the same location that the orbiter is attached to the external tank for launch. The aft port section of the airplane, there's two struts with what we call balls, and those go up inside the orbiter. In the front, there's a small little tripod adapter fitting that mounts to the structure that's been added to the shuttle carrier aircraft. Somebody uh, made kind of a joke, although it's, it's, it's relevant, for, by the aft attach points, it says, attach orbiter here, note, black side down, which of course the black for the tie also. It's kind of a joke, make sure somebody doesn't put it on the upside down. Although the plane itself had all the necessary technical requirements for a safe flight, the highly skilled crew monitored the systems carefully and experienced a different type of ride. From a pilot standpoint, there's a, there's a long wait. When, when, when the power's pushed up, you don't really realize the time that, that you're going to be on the runway before, before rotating the airplane into the air. So there's a big, big wait, and that, that's the big thing that was impressed upon me, I think, during my first uh, uh, shuttle fair. As the shuttle program ended, the SCA had one final mission. Deliver the shuttle's enterprise, discovery, and endeavor to their respective museums across the United States. For one last time, people got to see the unique vision of spacecraft and aircraft joined in flight. And with that, the SCA with the shuttle was not seen in the sky again. But it will always remind us of a bold age of determination and invention. When the orbiter is on top of the SCA, it just creates so much interest because it's such a unique sight that People come out by the thousands to see us wherever we stop, to come see this very unique combination. People appreciate and, and people respond to things like that. The American ingenuity and, and American pride.